Hello everybody, I have no idea what's going on tonight. We're having a funny game here. We've got things flying in the background. We've got all sorts of happening. <laughs> but anyway, I can't get the comments from Facebook. Sam's having his hair. It's getting real confused. Yeah. <laughs> so, hi everybody. It's Heidi. We've got Heidi here. And we have uh, Sam. I'll let you guys introduce yourself. So Heidi, hi. Welcome to Around the Table. Thank you. I am located in the States in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and I'm a spirit artist, healer, and enjoy working with spirit and art and meditation, sharing that with others. Cool. And Sam? Hello, everybody. My name's Sam, and I'm Sam Pert, Psychic Medium. I am a medium, a psychic medium, but also, as well as that, I do tarot cards, oracle cards. I read rocks and various nature's oracles and i'm also a reiki healer as well um and a musician actually as well so yeah that's a bit about me I'm, I'm by the way, I'm, from, I'm from east yorkshire by the way as well in england so <laughs> all right i was gonna i was expecting you to go on and on with the whole list i thought right it's got resume going on here <laughs> <laughs> so you said you do art heidi what do you yes. mean by the, what do you mean by the art? Well, I originally started um, as a sculptor working with ceramics and metalwork, forging and welding, and I've carried that through to working with healing and putting that energy into healing um, paintings like pet portraits, and also doing orographs and spirit drawing. So it would, it's kind of like sitting in trance and waiting for spirit to come and just kind of a lot of this and then waiting for spirit. Oh, we, we lost you there for a second then. <laughs> yeah, we don't, yeah you, I think you're back. Good. Hi, should we do some hellos anyway? Yes. Let's get them out the way. So we're saying hello to... Kim, hi Kim. Hey. Can you can you guys see the comments there coming up? Yes, I see the you can. Hi, Kim. Good. We got our lovely Terry here. Not saying that nobody else yeah. is lovely, of course. You know. Hey there, Terry. Uh, we've got Joanne. We have Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hey. We got Tony. Evening, Tony. We have Joe. Hi, Joe. We've got Julie. Oh. Hi, Julie. We've got Emma. Hi, Emma. Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Hey, hey, Jay. Hi, hey, AJ. We've got, we got Shelly. Hey, I, yeah. I, I, I want to say, come on down. <laughs> you know I, mean? I know, yeah. <laughs> Amy White, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> Hi to Stace, how you doing? Thanks, uh, Hi, a, big, a big thanks to Stace who's been helping out uh, awesome. with a brand new uh, system we're adding to SPTV. I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm going to say hello to our wonderful Marcus and to our hey, lovely Marcus, nice Mary as well. Oh, Rosemary hey, snuck in and Robert snuck in as well. <laughs> so there we go. Hey there, Robert. So it, what is the show? And oh, there's some more coming in. We've got Gail. Hi, Gail. We have Holly. Hi, Holly. Uh, welcome to the show. If it's your first time, we hope you enjoy it. It is a chat show. We don't do readings on this show. It's about going out with your friends if you're sitting with them at a coffee bar and having a, putting your feet up, putting a well to right and having a good old giggle and a good chin wag. So that's what it's about. That's getting people together. Um, so we are streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So if you're on Facebook, you won't see everybody on YouTube and vice versa. Obviously, we will see all the comments coming up. If you have any questions for any of us three, by all means, ask away. It doesn't mean that we'll actually answer them. Me, I'll probably just ignore them because <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, by all means, if you've got any questions for any of us, by all means, chat away. The comments this side are up automatically so we can see them. Um, but 
very quickly before we chat about anything else, um, we are SPTV is launching a brand new web directory tomorrow, the first of May. <laughs> and the thank you. The idea of that is for you to find your closest spiritualist church, your nearest medium. We use a technology technology called a geolocation, which means your phone knows where you are, basically using your IP address. And that's what geolocation means. So when you go and visit our new directory section, it will know your location. Um, it will ask your permission first to use it. And if you say yes, it will then tell you your local spiritualist church and your nearest medium. Obviously, the mediums need to come onto our directory and register themselves to get them, themselves known onto the directory. So that's the new feature that's been added to our website. And there's a lot more things will be happening in the next few months to the SPTV website. I'm trying to build it so it's a community-based system so you don't have to go everywhere looking for a local medium. You don't have to go to events trying to find a events anywhere you just go to SBTV and all the information that you need through events workshop talks directory is going to be there lots more things are being built onto the system so a big thank you for stace who's been helping out with helping veronica and myself with this idea so a big thank you to you yeah. there yes. god i said all that about breathing <laughs> and a big, big thank you to you as well richard for putting a lot of hard work into it behind the scenes too because um, you do things with all the computers and everything, I have no idea about. I keep, I keep um, sending you bothering texts to say, "How do I do this and how do I do that?" <laughs> I, I must admit, I am the worst person. If you want to say, well, "Can I make a Heidi about me up here?" When you make an appointment for a certain time, I will. I say, "Yeah, sure, I'll do it." I will totally forget it. <laughs> I think I get emails or messages from Veronica every few days saying, "Don't forget, you got this meeting." I go, oh, "Yeah." That's right. And when I'm asked what's on tonight, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I forget a lot because my mind is more like coding work. I'm constantly coding and building things. It's like 12 hour days for me trying to build the website and stuff like if, that. If life was in code, Richard, if life was in code, then you'd remember it, wouldn't you? <laughs> it would be, yeah. It's a bit like the Matrix. You know, you see all those green yeah. things going up on the screen. That's what I sort of see. Hi to Margaret, to Tina, who's come on as well, and to Emma. Thanks for yeah. coming on. Thank you, AJ. That's lovely. Um, but it's not just me who makes spiritual psychics TV what it is. It's the presenters. It's the guests, like the people here, Heidi and Sam. It's like people behind the scenes who do a lot of work. Terry who does a lot of work mm. with the Facebook yeah, and the social media. And yeah. we all do it for free. We don't make no money from it. The money mm. that we do get from our patrons goes to pay for the streaming costs and that's not cheap because we have a one terabyte uh, broadband line here um, so it's rather expensive um, yeah. we also have overheads as well for example the server we have our own dedicated server where the website is that's very expensive to have to, to run that so there's a lot of things going on a lot of time a lot of energy is put onto it but the idea is to make sure that people who use it have a great experience. It brings people together. It's that community yes. spirit. It is, it. Yeah. So. Hey, Hi, Jan. Nice to see you. Right. Yeah. So. I think on that subject of the directory, that I think it's really important for people to be able to find what's around them locally, um, to know that they aren't maybe the only one in their area, because it, that'll help them feel not as alone almost, because sometimes when you get into this spiritual world, um, it's all about being connected, but sometimes it can also make you feel a bit like, am I the only one like this around? And you realize that with something like a director, you realize that actually you're not, and there's someone just around the corner that can be coming right from where you're coming from, you know? Yeah. So I think it's really important. What we've also done, Sam, is one thing you just said there about finding new connections, is that mm. we, there's a lot of people out there who are fraudsters at the end of the day, yeah. do it for yes. money. Just look at me, I want more money. I don't care about the yeah. person. So what we've done with that, I say we because there's a lot of people who's helped out with this. It's not just me. Mm. And as you know me by now, um, I never say I. It's always the we. Everybody's yeah. included. And that's included in the viewers. 
it's them who make SBTV. It's them who gives us the ideas forward and all this sort of stuff and keep it going. But we've also added a rating system on there as well. So if you had a bad experience or you think this person is good, then you can rate them by a star system and you can leave a comment. All comments are vetted as well, same as when people register. Everybody's vetted to make sure they're above board and they're not just going to come on and sell all sorts of dodgy things and mm -hmm. try and sell things which we won't have. So when you come in, you have to also register. Once you register and the email goes to you, you then have to verify it. We then have to approve your submission to make sure it's all, all above. Once it's on the directory, you can then claim it for yourself. The reason why we've done that is because we may find a local medium or a local church and we might actually submit the information ourselves. So if you say, for example, we uploaded all the information about you, Sam, or you, Heidi, yeah. and you can then just think, oh, well, that's, that's all me, but can I have that so I can edit it? So then you just say, yeah, can I claim this? We say yes, because we've verified who you are. And that means that saves you time wow. by doing things as well. We've added a Google login. We've added a, a Twitter login and a Facebook login. So it's even easier and quicker now to register to the site. So yes. all that will be ready tomorrow. It's doing the final oh. tweaks now. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Um, what is, what's Mrs. D selling? I'm selling my high heels and my wig. I'm Heidi. <laughs> I've, I've, I've grown out of them. That's what it is. <laughs> Cheeky madam. So, yeah, that is it. How about yourself? Have you got any experiences or bad experience or good experiences by doing readings? Who first? <laughs> Oh, either one. <laughs> Go on in, Heidi. Whew. Um, I would say some of my worst experiences have been more with maybe social media and comments and trolls um, posting things more than one-on-one, -on -one, where I kind of feel like I always learn a lesson one-on-one, -on -one, even if it doesn't go the way expected. Um, but I definitely have learned a lot of amusing lessons from the ways that, like, I see some of these comments rolling through and I'm like, wow, all oh, this is so positive. Everybody's being so nice. That's a rarity to see in this day and age. So I kind of am, I'm, I'm very excited to be a part of something like this, just to retrain me on how um, an audience and the people that we're reaching should react or should interact. Yeah. Well, I, we are, we've been very lucky, and that was one of the things why I started the SBTV Live. It's because I was going to other people's websites and Facebooks and Twitters and all this sort of stuff, watching them do their live shows. And there was no community base. It was people just saying, can I have a reading, please? Can I have a reading? Why are you ignoring me? Why aren't you giving me a message? And then you had to read the reader saying, if I'll give you a reading, it's going to cost you $5. It's going to cost you seven dollars. Yeah. You know, give me one dollar and then I'll give you a reading. And they give one card. And I'm thinking, what are you, what are you doing? There's, where's the community here? Where's the love? Where's yes. the energy? Where's meeting new people? So yeah. we encourage drawing iron all our lives, even if it's a mediumship or divine service. We encourage people to have conversations in Facebook, on YouTube. And I must admit, if you talk about food, and I've just, just said the dreadful, dreaded word there now, food. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Sam knows. Then, believe me, Heidi, they'll be on for about 40 minutes on YouTube, blessed a lot of them, talking about food. And when we do our VIP nights or we're doing our chats, you always guarantee a certain people having crisps or cakes or drinks. <laughs> Of the live and it's great because it brings the atmosphere brings people well, together to, that they can trust and talk to yeah i remember I was, I was doing a demonstration once on sptv and I, it was all it was i mean it was a, it all went fine the demonstration and everything but i remember as i just come to the end of one of the readings randomly this comment came up about fried chicken and i was like <laughs> what? what and you're like oh yeah they've all been discussing fried chicken in the comments it's like really <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love they that. do, and it's hi Ashley. Um, 
but you do though hi tina that's the thing about it and when you have when i've watched <laughs> the community <laughs> see what i mean and yeah. it, i must admit it is usually I, i'm gonna i'm gonna say this now on air it is usually wendy who starts off the food conversation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it really is um so if everybody's on facebook and wonder what we're talking about you've I suggest you go over to YouTube where it's more of the community based. And I've seen them sometimes talking about food, recipes, and, and then the next step, when someone's receiving a message, they all turn and to give love, guidance, yeah. support yeah. to the person. If they don't quite understand the message, they're supporting them, giving them help. Yeah. And it is really a lovely place to be, a community based. And I, I still go on to some lives just to see what it's like, and I haven't seen it anywhere. In fact, just very quickly, because I, I do like to waffle on. So if I waffle on everybody, you just tell me to shut up and I move on. <laughs> um, I went on to a site the other day, um, ooh, about three, four weeks ago, and I, walked, I went in there. I said, hi, everybody. hope you're all well. I went in there as SBTV, and I was accused of being a spammer, being horrible, being a troll. And all I said was, hello. That's all I said. <sighs> and I thought, my God. And this presenter said, I'm fed up with people like you coming on here, spiritual psychic TV, spamming us. <laughs> and I went, oh, my God. What, what is this? You know, and I said, oh, I'm not going to be tolerant. I'm not going to be spoken to like this. She actually counseled her show and said, I've had enough. I'm off. I then wrote to her, I said, I'm really sorry if I offended. I only said hello. I had a couple of hours off in the afternoon, so I thought I'd come on and give my support to all, everybody else. Anyway, and then she accused me of being a troll. I said, how can I be a troll when I do the same as what you're doing? I wasn't malice in any way. I wasn't rude in any way. I just said hello to you. That's the only word I said. Hello, hope you were well. Mm. She did come back and apologize to me. I said that she's had it since she started going live. All she gets yeah. is trolls, Christians, and other religions coming on and being abusive towards her. And we had a nice long chat, and I thought, how sad is that? We it get is. Up, we get it on our channel as well. And um, I don't know when you two are doing your own Facebook lives, the abuse that you get. And we had someone on our live chat the other day start saying that we're evil. So I wrote back and said, is it, do we actually go on to your Christian live broadcast as a spiritualist and then complain about your faith? We don't. If you listen to one of our live broadcasts, we talk about Jesus a lot, we talk about God, and we talk about love and light. Mm. What's the difference? Yeah. We're more, I think we're more spiritual than most Christians, I think, sometimes. Um, and they meant to be you know, religious and spiritual and loving, but they come on and be foul-mouthed and rude and hateful you're thinking well, where's the spirituality that's, in that yeah that's right i mean i have i have a zero tolerance to anyone being offensive basically so on my on my lives when i do them anything offensive just isn't tolerated mm. so and i try to educate my audience about those spammers that come on and go inbox me for a reading and i educate all my viewers about that about just don't respond to them and they'll be blocked. I even say them, I t even tell them on the live, say, listen, that whoever it is, such and such a name, just stop posting your comments because you're just going to get blocked and no one's going to respond to you anyway. Um, and so I kind of educate the audience like that so they know not to respond, you know. Because unfortunately, some people do believe that these people are mediums and they're not. Yes. And, you know, and some people believe that they're psychics and they're not. Um and that's the sad thing about it. So, I here's, try a, not to... here's a question for you two. Then you've mentioned that word a few times now, Sam. Psychic. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I hear this quite a lot. What do you define a psychic to be? So my definition in mind, Ryan, how I I view it, is that a psychic is someone that connects to a person that is in living form on Earth. You psychically connect to that human being and a medium connects to the um, astral being of a person that's passed if you like we could call it many number of names but the energy body of the of a spirit past 
Um, and that's what a medium connects with. So that's the difference between the psychic and the medium. In the way I do it, the way I had them, that's where I come from with it, you know? Do you agree with that, Heidi? I do. I would be a little bit more inclusive with psychic because I think everyone is naturally a psychic. We all have that disposition if yeah. we are cleansing and healing and bringing those awarenesses to self. And it's almost like psychic to maybe other consciousnesses, other things around us that you could tap into also with nature, with universal consciousness. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. taking that to the next level, it would take that connection to spirit to kind of it's on a receiving end for the mediumship where you have these connections. But that doesn't always mean that a psychic will do mediumship work or will connect to spirit in that way. So but very much the same as Sam. Mm -hmm. So uh, Keeping on to that sort of thought on spirit and being the ability, let's just move on a little bit about trance if, if I can yeah. I've seen many many people I'm going to say the word supposedly yes. in trance and I hear so many different answers to the same question by these so called guides uh, from spirit yeah. and I get myself so confused to thinking what is the right answer here because we hear so so many stories. What the spirit is like. What happens when we pass away? There's no such thing as dimensions. or there is dimensions. What I would love to do is put a load of... I've said this to the VIP group the other night. It gets all these trance mediums, or let's loosely say, loosely say trance mediums, um, put them into a room, like via Zoom, and put them into rooms and say, right, you're in room one, you're in room two, you're in room three and get all, like, guests, like, VIP members or whatever, like, free in that room, free in that room, and that free in that room. Yeah. And they only have three questions each, and they all have to be the same question. They can't deviate from it. They can't change it. It's got to be from word to word. Just to see if those three trance mediums come back with the same answer. Now, if they come back with all different answers then obviously they need to sort it out over in the spirit world because surely they all meant to come out with the right answer or with the correct answer. That's my yes. belief. Am I, am I getting that wrong? I mean I, need, I mean, I need to put my hands up and say I am no expert in trance. Um, it's not something I've studied a lot, particularly within mediumship. I've more studied the non-trance mediumship. I don't know what the technical term is. Um, but um, that's so... But the way in terms of like the guides, I mean, the connection to the spirit guides and then the connection to the spirit guides with trans. But also my kind of experience with that too is that the connection to your guides is a very personal one. So I wouldn't feel like I, I could judge on someone else's connection to their guides. Yeah, but okay so then. then I, see your, I see your point there then, Sam. So okay, it's, when you're... When I've watched these trance, so many mediums come in and say, I'm so-and-so trance uh, name, I'm so-and-so spirit guide. And then they chat. Okay, so it's not become personal anymore, is it? Because you've just opened up to a whole audience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Sorry. the personal thing to you, it may be your main guide or whatever, and another guide comes in to give the questions. But I, mm. I remember asking one guide in trance a question. And I asked the question, is there such a thing as dimensions? And the answer was no. There is no such thing as in the spirit world as dimensions. People, it's a human way of saying a higher consciousness. But there's only one consciousness in the spirit and everybody's equal over there. And then I think, oh, wait a minute, so then what happens about the Ascended Masters? What about when you've extended yourself in the spirit world and you go to a higher realm? So all these things that I've heard over the years by all these so many mediums, yeah. and then all of a sudden the, this guide comes around and says, nope, it's a man-made thing, well, it's a human thing, no such thing. And then about a week or so later, I did, went along to another trance, I was invited to another trance show, and I asked the same question. And I 
totally different answer. I thought, well, if they're communicating with spirit, surely the answer should be the same. Why is it different? Why is it mediums give so many different answers? I remember when I was learning my mediumship many, many years ago, um, I remember being on the first floor, a gentleman called Charles Samways, a lovely man who was doing the mediumship circle, and I had my legs and my arms crossed. And he said to me, you can uncross them because it blocks spirit. And I thought, well, what? He said, well, you need to be one with the earth. And I said, but spirit work with my mind. Yeah. He said, well, that, yes, but that, you know, that's like blocking them. And I thought, I've never heard so much rubbish, putting <laughs> it bluntly. Yeah. And it, isn't it just proved now that when we, many, and people, I've heard many mediums say, I need to hear your voice because it works with the vibration. I need to see you because it worked with the vibration. But hasn't the internet proved none of that's actually right? Because when you're working on SPTV, you yeah. don't see who it is. You don't, you know, hear their voice. It's a vibration, that's... isn't it? So, and when yeah. spirits say to me, oh, there's no, you know, there's no such thing as time in the spirit world, well, how come they know to turn up on my channel at 8 o'clock then? Mm. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know if you want to respond, Heidi, but I've got, I can say something if you want. I would watch that. I would, I would watch it. I love the idea of like buzzing lights too for everybody that gets it the same, you know? Yeah. So it's more like a game show with all these different trance <laughs> mediums in a room. Um, I know there's different kinds of trance. I do where it, it's, trance on a level where some people in the UK or other people in the movement would say that's not trance at all but I ask spirit to come and take my hand and that's how I do spirit drawing is to not be present and so then I come back afterwards and I do have to connect back to get the details because I don't have any of the information I might not know if it's going to be a male or female when I start any information at all sometimes there's a little bit of detail but then you have these trans mediums that go so deep, they have no idea what's been said, what has come up. And I've seen some of these mediums work. They're amazing. There's an energy to it. You can feel it. It's just like a zest to it with the energy in the air. And I would definitely watch something where it brought these more scientific aspects to it, where we could kind of see, and if there were differences, maybe there's a way that they are different that we can understand or learn something from. So maybe it's an interpretation of wording or vocabulary, and mm. then we learn more about how to interact with these trans mediums. You might, my kind of take on, on what you said, Richard, that's really interesting, is that but I, I think that for my, what I kind of take on it is that for me, it's the connection that's really important with it and the blending of the spirit that's really important. And I think that we are only ever, because the, the potential of spirit is infinite because it's an infinite energy, right? That can be everywhere simultaneously, but, but also just in one place with us, you know? And spirit can, spirit potential is infinite. And the trouble is, is that us as human beings on earth have, are these ordinary minds that constantly only will ever reduce the potentialities of our work with spirit. And I think that in answer to your question, it's about almost like really focusing on that connection and then that merging and then letting go to the true potential of that spirit and energy that we're with to find the answer, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Okay, so you just said you just said something there about to, to try and find that answer. Yeah. So are you saying as a medium then, when you're communicating with spirit, they don't have all the answers because they have to find it? Well, I, I was only related it to the scenario you were putting in, that, in terms of that game show thing. You know, yeah. Um, but I was putting it in that scenario of that game show. Yeah, no, but I'm trying saying. to twist it back to you. So yeah. <laughs> so that spirit, spirit, completely know what they're doing. Um, you know, they know the questions before we even think of the answers. You know, um, that's, yeah, so, so that's you're the saying best that. They, okay, then. So now you're saying that they read your mind. 
it's because they know they already if you have that in your mind it's a question okay so then you're what saying is, to me that you already know the answer the possibility spirit is my mind Ooh, so isn't it, dun, but isn't dun, it dun. but aren't we meant to have our own free will isn't our life private we have we have our own free will yeah but spirit is also our mind so okay so the spirit is our mind so our, like from, my, our, from my thinking and my perspective of this we are energy beings yeah. inside a human body yeah yeah yeah. Which means that our pure essence is one of of inspiration and love and light. It's exactly the same as spirit. It's actually, there is no joining and actually disjoining of where we stop and spirit starts. Mm. Interesting like concept that. there. Yeah. But, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm going to be devil's advocate tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but by all means, <laughs> um, I have a very inquisitive mind. I think it's when I was at an early age and I've had my experiences and I've had the pleasure of working some, with some fabulous, very well-known mediums in my time. And I'm not showing off. Please don't take it that way. But when you sit with some of them and some of the questions and answers that they come out with and you see a lot of them, some of them have passed away now. Some of them are still on the circuit or not as much. Some have retired. And when I sit down and think about how hard it was for them as a medium going around the country, going through so much agony with their life, maybe it financial, maybe it with health issues. And I think when you come down and you choose supposedly come down to the earth plane and say, I want to be this person and I want to go through that experiences. Okay, I can accept that. But that something doesn't feel right with that. Because if you want to go through and want to live through that experience, then it has to be prearranged, doesn't it? Mm. It has to be thought what you're going to do. So let's say, and I'm, I've said this before many, many times, and I'm going to repeat myself, so apologies if you've heard it before. If you're going to turn around and say, okay, when I, when I turn 47, I want to experience of, let's just go very blunt and horrible here, that I'm going to go the experience of hurting someone. Okay? Yeah. So then I need to get permission from that spirit energy for, let's say, for her to agree that I'm going to hurt her at that time. Let's say I'm going to cause a lot of damage to her life. Right? So she has to agree that before we come down because that's what she wants to experience and that's what I want to experience. Yeah? Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to I'm trying to get where you're coming from. I think you understand, yeah. Yeah, okay. So then I've agreed with her that I'm gonna hurt her when I'm forty seven. Right? She may be twenty years younger than me, let's say. So I've got to wait twenty years, she's gotta wait twenty years. She's then got to go to her parents and say, look, I'm going to be hurt at this age and I want you, I want to experience that. Is that okay with you? So then you can experience that hurt. And they're going to, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. I want to experience that pain, that heartache as well. So, okay. And how about her grandparents then? Do they have to agree as well? Because they want to go through that pain? Where does it stop? And then how about the siblings? How about the friends? So everybody is affected by one action. So you're telling me that one action, everybody around me has to agree for me to do this because they want to experience that pain as well. It's a bit mind-boggling, wow. isn't it? Mm. So it and, is. then, and then spirits say, that, well, there's no time. Well, well, there is. The universe is time. Man just came along and just figured out days, nights, minutes, seconds, but the universe was there. It was day, night. It was still there. We just put figures and numbers and names to it. So there is time. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Have I just so blown your head now? <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's I, I it slightly differently in the sense of I come it from it more from a karmic point of view rather than an asking permission point of view, because obviously I have a big background in Buddhism. Yeah. So this is where, for me, the teachings in karma 
sort of a, around what you're talking about, the concept of... Now, I mean, I need to say, first thing about karma is karma doesn't judge. That's the really important thing here. Karma is just the cause and effect. It's like a law, if you like. So when a negative action is, is, is done, that results in a negative result. And that negative action can only come out of someone having negative thoughts to do something harmful to another. Okay? And that, of course, will result in a negative result. So for me, that's linking to this concept of what happens in the relation to these energies of, of, of like people doing bad things to one another. And for me, it links into the karma. And the reason why I say it doesn't judge is that it's very important to understand that if someone does a negative action, even though they, that results in negative results, it's not, must never be seen in the way of like, ah, so you deserve it because look what you did. Because that person that did that negative action was in a bad place. So that person needs love and compassion. That's why we must never use karma as a judge. Because you do often see it, people going, ah, oh, well, negative karma will get them. It's like completely wrong. That is completely not karma at all. Mm. And actually karma in to some degree also actually is our life. Because every little moment today, you've thought about, should I do that? Should I not do that? Should I create a cause for something that creates an effect? Should I have a cup of coffee today right now? Well, to have a cup of coffee, I've got to get a cup and I've got to get all this that creates the effect for you to have that cup of coffee, you know? So that's my kind of, that's where I come from on it. Yeah, it's, yeah it's like sliding doors, isn't it? You go from one, if you change a direction on one angle, your life would be different. If you move it to another angle, your yeah. life would be different there. So yeah. I'm not, um, I, when I, what I was saying earlier on, it was just, these thoughts that come through my very imaginative mind of the concept of where mediums talk so much and what goes on over there and all of, if you well okay how do you know this have you been in trance has your spirit guide told you because that's the answer that i usually get so then why mm -hmm. is it different to everybody else so i always remember what colin fry was in trance once many years ago and I was lucky enough to be in the room when he was doing the trance, and I must admit it was amazing to watch. Mm. And out of all the mediums that I've seen over the years, he still, for me, is at the top. Yeah. And there's a few people like Polly and a few others that I've seen are, are there as well. But I remember this one occasion, and one question came out, and it was, what are we? What is the spirit world? And the answer that his spirit guide came through was, it's whatever you want it to be. It's your mind, not mm. ours. And I thought, well, that's a good answer because we want to see spirit in our own way and what yeah. we want to do. So I thought, is that a cop-out? No, because we won't know until we pass over, until we've finally mm. given up. I thought, you know, I've had enough of this. I'm fed up doing the washing up. I'm going to go over there <laughs> so I think, yeah. and have a job as a cleaner. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, what, what's your thoughts, uh, Heidi, on experience, life experiencing? I, I kind of see this as this way where it is not predetermined that way where we do have free will, but every from the perspective of more than one life, which is kind of what I follow and kind of have got to experience with past life regressions. We have a certain something to follow through with of learning something. So if the goal is to learn forgiveness, you know, maybe or to teach forgiveness, maybe you are the villain in that story. But that was a choice before the physical body. So of mm -hmm. the spirit is the choice. So whether the timeline is 47 years old, this person gets hurt. It's something that was determined before this concept of aging sequentially in physical body was chosen, if that makes any sense, or if we're just going a little bit further down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, let's go down the hole. I think two people say, oh, let's, let's not go down that hole. Why not? Why don't people ever want to go down the hole? 
That's a good question. I feel like there's a lot of people where you get into this life cycle and it's the same thing with the one. I have that same idea, Sam, where we are the one, but as the many, the lessons to be learned. And here we are kind of going in that direction of this is where the miscommunications or the misunderstandings Mm -hmm. start, whether there is more than one life, whether there is more than one dimension. And then you see how in each direction, multiplying and multiplying and multiplying, it just gets so big, scares people and they shut down. Well, I think that's I think that's the reason why often we don't go down the rabbit holes because yeah. it can be scary and frightening to look at ourselves and look at what's happening and look at all the aspects of us that make up us. And I think that's partly the answer why we'd never go down those rabbit holes. You know? But maybe if we go down those holes, then we may find some truths. Exactly, yeah. I like you that know? idea. And people don't want to face the truth. They want to live in a non-reality world. They want to feel that Gosh. they're... Well, it's true, though, isn't it? If true, someone yes. says, Let's use you two as an example. When we came on from, from earlier on, if you turn around and said to me, I asked you two, how are you both? And you went, yeah, I'm good. And then you asked me, am I good? Now, I could have said, no, I'm fed up, I'm stressed, I've had enough. But you don't. We put this mask on for people and say, I'm good. But you yeah. only share that information in, in personal life to somebody who you can trust. Yes. supposedly but okay then let's say you get onto a bus and there's someone sitting you and you just talk to you so this completely stranger for for an hour and afterwards you feel fantastic you, you have no idea who this person yes. is but you've let all your personal information out because as humans i feel that we need to express ourselves and sometimes we all most of the time we put on masks for people put masks on for the family our friends for the public are we truly our real selves when we look at the mirror? Or do we keep putting masks on? And no, I'm not on about Mrs. Doubtfire either, Heidi, before you go on. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I do believe that it's so important to find your true self because I have I've been through a lot in terms of self-acceptance of me as being a gay person and everything like that. And it took me years and years and years before I could finally be just open about who I am, you know? And so that's, I can tell you from that experience alone, it it has completely changed my life, being comfortable with me, you know. But it's it's really, it can be not very easy to get to that point. It can take a lot of time and it has to take whatever time it takes the person, need that person needs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is incredibly healing, that self-acceptance. And that's why um, I would recommend it. I mean, again, with my Buddhist trade and again buddhism is all about looking at you it's not about treating others it's all about focusing back on you and improving yourself to for the benefit of others you know and so i completely sign up to that um being so important to look down those rabbit holes to not be afraid to look at the ugly bits because no one it's not like anyone um doesn't forgive you for being like that. You know, it's, it's part of our human condition almost to get over these this baggage and lack of self-acceptance. And, and that can come from a whole number of places, you know. And I think it's just so important and healing for people yes. to accept themselves for the beautiful beings that they are. Because let's remember, we're going back earlier, how we are all these basically our essence is this beautiful energy being of love light and inspiration and that's who we all are but we just don't see ourselves that as that and it's such a shame you know and that's why it's really important we have i to... completely agree yeah there's this part of healing that isn't pretty it's ugly it's messy and it takes forever. And if you think that it's like, oh, this isn't go, oh, wait for it to slow down. And then you come back to this place where you see yourself from a different perspective and you keep changing. And maybe you're not taking anything else on and you are just directly healing. But getting to that place of being whole and being healthy is not a goal, even in this movement, even with mediumship and people doing psychic work. The healing, the meditation can take the back burner. And I, I definitely see how 
you know, these are the goals that we're talking about more and more because we see how much of a part they're playing, whether it's by generation or by, you know, more than one life cycle, the healing that we do. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I just see what Veronica just said there. Um, I was just reading a, that. Yeah. Oh, that's that a new the, rabbit hole. Yeah. I like the comment that that six feet down's a rabbit hole. It's a hole in <laughs> itself. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But we do, though, don't we? We all we, we talk about these thoughts and we, we think about where our life's going to be and what we're going to do with ourselves, what we're going to do with our children, what are we there for, what are we here to achieve. And people just think, oh, I don't do nothing in my life. I don't do, you know, I don't do anything to life. I don't do anything to... I just sit here watching TV all day or whatever. But if you look back at your lives and what you've achieved, you know, bringing life into the world like children, that's a huge achievement. There's so many risks there. You brought up that child to become hopefully a respectable part of the community. You've worked hard. You've gone through illnesses. You've gone through financial difficulties. All these are possibilities, of course. But if you look back at yourself, what you've achieved, not who you are now, what you've done, because if you look back, I am someone special. I have achieved this. Look what I have. Look what I've gained through my life. If people start looking at themselves more as a positive than what they did have or they didn't have, I think there'd be a lot happier, better people out there. Instead of using, yeah, instead of using spirit as a get-out clause to get answers, what I like about the people who come on as our viewers, a lot of them say, I'm not here f- for a reading. I'm here to meet my new friends, my online friends. Or it'd be nice when a spirit come in and say, I don't know, let's just use Stacey because she's just popped up on the screen. <laughs> then... Spirit may come in and say, hi, Stace, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Great. You know, I saw what you did yesterday. You were doing the iron and board and burnt the shirt. They're having a conversation with you as though they would be if they were still on the earth plane. That's all mm. they're interested in. They're not interested in what's going to happen tomorrow, the lottery ticket numbers. They're not interested. They want to talk to you. Yeah. And that's where the medium comes in. And if you're a medium who's practicing, who wants to communicate, and when you start getting that information come through, it's wonderful because then you can start having conversations with your family, your loved ones. Mm-hmm. And so we're st- we still do when you can't see them. So people got to stop thinking, oh, go on here, I'll watch this. I want to get a reading. I've had a rough day. I've had a bad day. I need some support. And then they don't get a reading. Think, well, why don't you give me a reading? Well, there's more important things to do. There's lots of healing that needs to be done. A lot of energy exchange has to be done. You're doing okay. You just got to on the wrong side of the morning. But is that a test? Did you cope? Did you pass it? Yes, you got home. You sat down, you're home safe. Someone else may not have got home safe. So you should be privileged to ask to what you've got and what you... Don't see it as a negative that you've had a bad day. Look at it as though you've done that day. You passed it. You achieved it. Yes, it might have been a bad day, but at least you did it and you were home safe. That's how I see it. Now, I'm the worst. I like a good moan like everybody else. And I like a good waffle. I moan about all my presenters waffling. <laughs> I'm the worst one for it. But sometimes it's nice to look at life and what you're doing at a different angle. Yes. That's what I say. That's what In I'm saying for tonight. Yeah. Well, and having hey, that gratitude of heart so that you're welcoming more things. How are you supposed to welcome more blessings if you can't even see what you have? I mean, just like you just did where you kind of took this imaginary inventory of a life's work. You know, every day that I get up, get out of bed, brush my teeth, there's this way that I still am like, yeah. You know, because there's times where maybe that didn't happen or, you know, we it's like these small victories that we have every day we take for granted even flipping on light switches i'm telling you you go spin somewhere with no electricity you will really never not appreciate every light you switch on and off it becomes magical and it's all of these ways that we've been given so many things to distract us 
and they're amazing things. Oh, they're magical in their own right. Mm -hmm. Computers, machines, we get to ride in all these magical things that are all these man-made creations pulling us away from this spiritual path. But it's just like that, you can get back on it. Just like that, all of a sudden you bring the spirit back into it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people on the spiritual path, I know that when you initially can start off on a spiritual path, sometimes you imagine it being literally these big jumps of realization and big colors and all, all of this going on and flashing lights and, and you name it and all that. And we forget that actually when you truly live a spiritual life, you're going to live it, you live it every day. And yes. so it's those small little things, those beautiful things and magic. It's those, it's, it's seeing through spiritual eyes is what it is. So so everything you see, you can see a spiritual meaning and a spiritual lesson in. And so that really turns how you, because everything in a way is how we perceive it. So how, no matter what situation comes along, there will always be a lesson in there. There will always be a bit of development in there. And it might not be a massive, great big leap up four stairs, but you know what? You never get up a staircase um, in one leap. You have to take it one little step at a time, and that's the beauty of just seeing the little steps as you go, just slowly, slowly. Oh, I can jump a whole. You know, yes. I could jump a whole staircase easily. It's got to be one <laughs> of those ones you buy for a doll's house. In a doll's house, yeah. Easy. One. Buy one in the next doll's house and just jump over and see if I've achieved it today. <laughs> well, and there's a simpler way of like, we hear all the time in mediumship, just get what you get. But if you can't do that in life, if you can't be yourself, if you can't give your, give your realities as the truth presents itself, which you know how individualized truth can be presented, then how are you supposed to give what you get in a message? You know, yeah. and that's you, the way that the mask has to fall. Because you have to understand what the message is, isn't it? That if it's yes. symbolic, <clears throat> excuse me, then you have to try and think, okay, what does that mean to me? Because then that should mean something yes. to that individual. But sometimes you just can't understand it. You say, right, okay, doesn't make any sense, but would you understand that I am seeing a elephant walking backwards sort of thing? It might, might, might mean nothing to anybody, but the, the recipient will think, oh, yeah, I know that. I know what that means. That makes sense. Because sometimes we just don't understand what it means. So as the expression, just give what you get. I think the, way, the way I look at that, though, is that sometimes it's not our job to understand it. Mm, absolutely, it's just our yeah. job to give it, you know. So, so I kind of, I just, at those moments, I do just give it. I, get, I just need to give you this. Um, and say sometimes it might be symbolism or it might actually be this particular thing and I need to give you it, you know? Uh, so, okay. Yes. okay, then you two. Have you ever had been given something or seen something in your third eye and it makes no sense but you can't say it because it's rude? I take well, that as a yes and look at those little smiles. <laughs> I, th I think the hardest ones are navigating things around suicide, especially when they present themselves to you as you don't know, like you're opening the closet and then you've already opened the closet by saying I'm opening the closet. And then all of a sudden, you know, what's behind the door and these moments where you're giving the message and you're so in it, there's no relay to stop yourself, which is the way it's supposed to be. And the, the end term would be the spirit might not get another chance. The healing that I'm bringing might last with you for years and you might resent me for getting this message. But the healing that this might start it on its course, you might not reach out for again. So I have that re requirement to stay to the spiritual side of it, to stay towards giving that message for spirit. But yeah, absolutely. They, they have the children. Oh, it's brutal. And I mean, that feeling having lost a child of giving that message, I, I bring that up a lot with talking about that to people. How am I supposed to give a message around something I have pain or need healing around? And so it's a tough one, though. I know you have a lot, Sam. Mm. It's, it is hard. I think in those messages, I think this is where it's really important, that connection to the spirit that you and And when you're connected to that, spirit then 
because obviously spirit always has the healing in mind and the, and the and um, that beautiful intention of healing, you know. So when when those moments come, I do really just hand it over to spirit at that point, you know, um, big time, you know. Do you, do you feel then that when you do you think? Okay, I, I changed my, my my thought. Do you think that people live their lives or put the blame on spirit too much? For example, spirit, um, I'm having a rough day. Can you come in and support me? Spirit, what are lottery numbers? Spirit, can I get a message? Spirit, <laughs> yeah. can you give me a parking space? I mean, a classic example of that is, is sometimes on my live feed to have people coming on saying, can you tell me how I'm going to be doing with my husband? Can you tell me how we're, how we're getting along? It's like, and I say to them, with the greatest of respect, I'm not giving you a reading. You need to speak to your husband. Mm, absolutely, you know? yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and it's so important communication, and you do. I do find sometimes people do reach out for readings when actually they, they just need to talk to the people, yeah. the community, you know. Absolutely, because they're not looking. They're looking for guidance, but they're not sure how to approach the person they care about because mm, they don't know the reaction. Right. So they're scared yeah. of a reaction or a negative. So if yeah. if you can just turn around and say to someone, "Okay, I've got this thoughts. I would like your help." That's the magic word. Your help yeah. in making me understand. Yeah. Because if you have that understanding, and another thing is, um, is when you start listening to someone and you get agitated, you get annoyed. It's easy for me to say now. I can understand that. But when someone raises their voice to you, just stay calm and just listen and say thank you for that. That uh, makes sense. Why I make you angry? Let's now help me. To to try and resolve that situation. Because when you're yelling at people, raising voices, you're not listening to what's being said. You're only picking up on certain keywords when you're talking. And that's a proven fact. So well, if we and could... I mean, getting angry is just like as blinding as almost being, you know, out of sorts with something like drugs or alcohol. You can be blinded in that oh, rage and that anger so you're oh. not taking anything in. And there's no way that someone can benefit you in that situation. It's almost like, I think a laugh is the key, the key way to go. If you can get somebody that's upset like that, where you get an even ground laughter, where you make fun of the fact that we all deal with this or that you understand this, then automatically you're creating energy and a movement between the two of you, even if it's mm -hmm. a laugh to then start in the direction of a conversation, to then start in, I love that what you said, Sam, being like, you need to talk to them and using that intuition to say, I'm not going to do that to benefit you. That doesn't benefit you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Changing yeah. subject because we've gone down a lot of holes tonight. That did not sound right. And I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I can feel my face going bright red right there. Moving on very quickly. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um <laughs> so what's the first thing you're gonna be doing from seventeenth of May? Because that's not when where you, the shops and I think are open normally then, isn't it? We're back to normality then, I think, isn't it? We're back to normality here in the States are in you? some of the areas. Where I'm from in Louisiana, we are not, but here we're opened up and mask free. Can I just go back one minute? You just said in the States, you're already in normality. Well, no, in the part of the States that I live in. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no. we're in the no, States, no, no, so there's no, no normality no, Let's all. go back. You said in America that you're, norm, you're in normality. You're normal in America. Are you well, sure about that? Everything's opened back up <laughs> in the direction of that. Uh, I don't think you're normal over there at all. I've seen the presidents you vote in. But anyway. <laughs> We're taking notes from you guys. We're trying to bring those good pieces of the spiritual movement that you guys have to offer and just kind of mixing it together, getting a little quilt fashioned. <laughs> uh, you got to have a giggle. Everyone, you got to have a laugh. So how about you then, Sam? So what's the first thing you're going to do when you have your freedom? Um, We're going to... Still take it careful, to be honest. We're going to let everyone else dash out and we're going to just let them queue at the shops, let them feel that they need to buy whatever it is and we're going to um, follow them out maybe a month or so after that. Mm. 
And everybody, please support your local small independent shops. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're just going to take it steady, really. We're not in any hurry to dash out and buy loads of things um, because that's not where happiness lies. So we're just going to stay quite content within and, um, and yeah, and just take it steady. I was... Um, well- we don't have a lot of local shops like that left in the States because so many of them has, have closed. It's been a big part of something. I think people now have taken this time to get inspired and bring new things forward. So I think that's interesting. I love that you said that because it's all about the community supporting the community. Yeah, it is. And something where, else where to take notes it, on. Where there's a small village where I am and there's a, about three, in, I'm about three, four miles away, our local supermarkets, Sainsbury's, Asda's, Morrison's, so forth. And, and in between that, it's got all the small independent shops. And we find, every time I go there, it always seems the small independent shops are busier than the big mm. supermarkets. Because for, for us, where I live, it's, there's farms around everywhere, and the, the farm shops are actually gorgeous. Um, yes, they're a bit more expensive to buy, but you know you're buying good products. Yes. It's a shame that people are not saying, okay, let's stop. I'm no longer going to buy from China because I think you buy is from China. Yes. Why don't we start saying made in England or made in the UK and buy those products? Let's get all made in America. But That's so true. Why don't we do that? Why don't we just all stand up and say no more? And it won't work because the people at the top it's all about greed. How much money can we save? If that's going to cost us in the UK £24, if we get that made in China, it's going to cost us 6 We then sell it for 32 We've made 100% profit, this sort of thing. And it's all about greed. But if they start looking at what they're doing to their own country and people will start saying, we've had enough. Yes. You know, it's because there's, there's no need for the greed. If you share what you have... Everybody would be better off. Well, and in the bigger picture, all those people that are suffering to make a living wage in China and around, they're doing all of these things, children, child labor, and paying such a small rate for these things that then we make profits off of. There's Where's the compassion in that and, and that move to not only shop local, but to see where your dollar follows all the way back or where any currency you use hmm. for, to the origin of. People don't like to know that kind of stuff. It's not pretty. No. You know, people, we have things like that where these options for organic or from table to, and because of the cost, people don't want it. <laughs> If it's cheap and it looks as good as or tastes as good as, then I'll grab it. I'll eat it. And there's no consideration of the bigger picture. Yeah. Ooh, that's another rabbit hole we, we're not going to go down. Yeah. There's a lot we've chatted about tonight, isn't it? Go on. It is. It's, yeah, um, it's, um, I've just noticed what they're saying about um, Heidi saying, pretty sure the cakes I buy were not made in China. <laughs> but how do you know? If all the rubbish they put inside them, it probably was made in China four weeks ago. And it's been in the freezer ever since. Sort of yeah. thing. You just don't know, do you, what, what you're eating unless you make it yourself. Yeah, we're, so we're, we're eating homemade pizza tonight with, um, with wedges. With wedges? I mean, what, potato wedges? Yeah, potato wedges, yeah. I was thinking, you know, the wedges that hold the door open. Oh, God, that's me a bit chewy. So is anybody, before we round off, oh, Alison's saying she's in the bath, relaxing with lavender, jasmine, bath bomb, wow. full of the love, greed, and curse of the, yeah, and curses of the world. Yep. Uh, the best comeback ever out of your China cupcake, says, yep. <laughs> Um, talking about cakes though, I did have my neighbour I say neighbour, it's like a 10 minute walk um, come over and they've put they've just moved in, bless them, there's a young couple I say younger, they're younger than me anyway, and they've put a cupcake uh, in a tissue and a little label on top and she runs her own cookery, cake making cakes as a living and she's just bought the house down the road 
and she's turning it into like a, a kitchen sort of thing to say hello. I thought, yeah, I know what you're doing. You're trying to fatten me up. So I buy well, all your cakes. Support, supporting local business. Supporting Absolutely, local yeah. business. You can have yeah. to buy loads of cupcakes, are you? <laughs> <laughs> but it, I must admit, I, I think I had one bite and it was very nice, but it was too sweet for me. I don't need oh, a lot of sugar. And it was a, a Mars bar brownie. All right. And it looked very nice, and it was it was very nice, but I just couldn't eat and one mouthful, and then a half a pint of water, just to get the sugar taste from the mouth. Do you know what? Do you know one of my my nicest ever cupcakes I've had ever was at this place called the EFDSS in London, in um in Camden in London. It's the English Folk Dance and Song Society, and they have yeah. a co- they have a cafe downstairs, and they made the icing of the cupcake with mascarpone cheese and Ooh. then they added all of the vanilla flavorings and stuff like that so because of that it wasn't too sweet and it was oh wow it was good she was started on we started on the cakes now we're we'll doing recipes soon so colin's given us a question though uh, what do you both think the next five years hold for humanity a wonderful opportunity to connect together again and and end up in a better place than we were we are at the moment and to get even closer connections to people that's what i feel mm, i love that i think that we're coming through a lot of darkness and dark times and there's these veins of maybe not being done with that yet but the way that the pieces will come back together that way that I kind of see, you know, maybe all of this, like all the things we've been talking about, they were all something that needed to happen. Maybe all of these negatives and all these directions we've gone in have somehow happened to or intentionally or eventually bring us back around, back to whole. And so I'm just putting all those energies towards that light coming back through and holding on to the light that I shine and helping others to shine theirs. But whew, lots of things have a lot I could say about that. That could be a whole other hour. Yeah, we haven't, we're running out of time. <laughs> For me, I say that embrace every moment that you have because mm. today is the present, yes. hence why it's a gift. Tomorrow is the future and yesterday was the past. If you learn from yesterday, and then go forward to the future, to what you've learned from yesterday. Because we just don't know, do you? Take that experience. Yeah. Take that comment. Yeah. It could be that one small comment that makes you feel good. Someone coming into the chat room and saying, nice to see you. How are you? That's all it takes sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. If, yeah. if people keep saying, I've had a bad day, a bad day, well, okay. If someone reaches out and say, how are you? Just say, I'm not too bad. It could have been a better day. Because we think about it, we can go to our tap, turn it on, and we've got instant water. There's some parts of the world have got to walk 40 miles to get some fresh water, and it's not even fresh. So, you know, we should be privileged to what we have. So when we have a bad day, take it as an experience, learn from it, enjoy it. And I've noticed a lots of people talking about those cakes and muffins and things. Um, so what I would do, I would go down to... Um, his name's Ben and his partner and say I would like to order so many VIP cakes and I will send them as a gift to the VIP members only to the regulars though I will pick some names out of the hat because I'm not going to send it to everybody it cost me a fortune and I'm too tight <laughs> <laughs> so I know five or ten and I'll send them to you as a gift from SPTV there you go how about that so anyway let's talk about what's on tomorrow night um i can't remember who it is because i have a terrible memory but we do have an evening of mediumship at eight o'clock tomorrow night that's on every saturday we always have different mediums if you are a medium and you want to come on sbtv to strut your stuff as they say please either go through me and I'll only bounce you to Veronica Jenkins or go and speak to Veronica Jenkins. But what we're doing as from tomorrow, if you want to be a part of SBTV as a presenter or co-host, you must register with our directory because there's certain 
GDPR regulations that we have to abide by, and that's the only way we can do that. So if you want to be a part of that, send Veronica, come onto our website, the new directory, which will be launching tomorrow. So go along and register, and your name will be put forward as the host. That's also for Wednesdays as well. Um, Sunday, we have a divine service at 11 o'clock. And I think that's it for Sunday. I'm pretty sure. Oh, Charlotte Underwood. Thank you very much, Terry. See what I mean? She's a wonderful job, admin. Terry. You know, she's yeah. Great. Keeping um, you in line. I see that. Good job, Terry. Yeah, she does. She does a great job here. I have to get the whip out every now and then to sort of get her under control, you know. <laughs> um, and then, um, what was it? Sunday evening. I can't remember if we got the Sunday safer on this week. I don't think it is, but it doesn't matter anyway. Um, so, but we have the VIP night on Sunday. I think you're, you're due to come on soon, aren't you, Sam? I am, yeah. I've not got my diary, but I am due to be on very soon, yeah. Yeah. And who, I'm gonna, hold on, I've got a mute because I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> but do you want to tell people, because you've got events coming up as well, haven't you? I have got some events coming up on my page. If people check out my page, Sam Pert Psychic Medium, um, I've got some fundraising events that I've got coming up. And I've also got some um, like guest mediums that I'm working with on my page as well. So um, I'm a bit like you, Richard. I can't remember all the dates of them. So the best <laughs> place to go over to my page and check them out. And um, to, to always say you're interested, by the way, on not just SBT event, SBTV events, but on any events on Facebook and then you get a notification about them. So don't forget to do that. Um, it's a really good way of, of like just putting events in your diary and, and be able to remember that they're happening and stuff. You just need to say interested is all you need to do or going if you can. And yeah, just check them out. We've got lots of different events coming up. Yeah, um, it was Mary Ward who's on, on Sunday. Um, thank you for that, Mary. <laughs> and Heidi, <laughs> how can people get hold yes. of you and chat to you? So, and... Yes. I have a Facebook page and you can reach me, Heidi Carodi or Infinite Journey, which is who I do the healing circle and mediumship circle with. This Tuesday, every Tuesday, we do a healing circle. Every Wednesday, we do a meditation, which is a guided meditation. And we do a little taster sesh at the beginning, something short and small for you to learn new ways to bring meditation like tapping, origami, tai chi and then we do intuitive art after each meditation so that's a 12 week three month and it starts this wednesday for the first one which is contemplations so it's always free anyone that wants to come has a desire to heal themselves or has a desire to go within it's there for you guys it's turned into an advert channel this isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Well, but do I you, really, I really love that we get an I don't opportunity mind. to share that with everyone I don't mind. too. That's what it's about. It's as a, our slogan is: is bring spiritual people together. And just very quickly, do you feel since the lockdown, so many people have got together because and they can offer so many more things through workshops, talks, mediumship, yeah. and the, the the old generation of I don't want to do that. I'm quite happy standing at the rostrum is now gone. You're still Absolutely. going to get there. We're not being disrespectful, but if you don't move with the times, mm. then you're not going to get booked. Where you couldn't go to a church service, now a lot of churches, you can stand there. They have the screens, like Wimbledon, for example. You can still go there and broadcast at the same time. Yeah. It's opened up a huge, huge yeah, has... network of people with this. Mm. Yeah, without a doubt. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Right. Internationally, we get an opportunity to learn so much from each other, whereas I think before lockdown, getting to use Zoom, it was just more individualized. You'd had these American, and I mean, I've learned so much from you guys, from all the different spiritualist churches I visit, and them putting their services online. It's awesome. Such a resource. Good. Right. I think that's enough for us, because I will waffle on. Um <laughs> So thank you to Heidi and to Sam for being my wonderful guests tonight. Um, please don't come back because you bored me. No, not really. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, yeah, thank you to everybody at home for listening. And Terry's saying, we're saying, 
if it wasn't for lockdown, I wouldn't have found SBTV and all these wonderful people I can call yeah. friends. And that's what I'm grateful for during the lockdown. Yeah, I, yeah. it's the same thing with me, uh, Terry. It's when you when you meet these people and the giggles and the laughs that you can have with complete strangers, which then mm. turn into friends. Look at what we're doing tonight. We're, we're just throwing yeah. thoughts and ideas and opinions across. Yeah. And sometimes you just can't share that sometimes. You go to a church service, thank you very much, there's your cup of tea, be quiet and move on. And you're not really sharing anything. I'm not saying that all churches do that. Um, but with that, you have the opportunity. When we have an evening which has been counselled, we turn on the Zoom for everybody to, to use, not just the VIPs, but for anybody to come in. Even yourself, Sam, you've been on in a few. Just to come... Yeah, just a chin wag and to like minded think. And yes, if it's it turns into giggles and food and and so be it, because that's what it's about. Is and it, the other night I must quickly say this: it was Monday night, and I hope I don't embarrass anyone, but I had my headset in, the Bluetooth, listening to it, and I had no idea what these young ladies were talking about. It was a Sam. It was a woman's thing, and to me, it was a lot of sexual innuendos. I think, but all they were doing was laughing and giggling and saying these one-liners. And I just thought, you know what? I am not going to get involved in this conversation <laughs> at all. Best keep out of it. But watching them laugh and giggle and crying with laughter, it shows that upliftment of complete strangers coming together and sharing the compassion, the love, and the energy of becoming new friends. Even though they've never met until March, we're all coming along to the Spirit Seekers event in March next year, which is going to be fun. I'm going to hide in my room as quick as much as I can. Um, but I'm looking forward to meeting everybody, and I know they are. It's going to be a good, good time. Anyway, I'm waffling on again. Thank you, everyone. And... Uh, I'm going to say good night. Well, I'm not going to read a comment that Stace just said, but I'm not getting involved. Something about coal holes, squirrels gathering nuts. I am not. I am. It's got to be a woman's thing. I'm not going down there at all. I'll leave you to it. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. And good night and take care.